The Ruined King, a League of Legends story, is a turn-based RPG game set in the world of Runeterra, where the ever-popular MOBA title League of Legends and the hit Netflix TV series Arcane, as well as the big card game contender to the likes of Magic the Gathering and Hearthstone, Legends of Runeterra, also takes place. The world of Runeterra has greatly expanded over the years, and the world is huge and rich in lore. But for this title, we are focusing on the southeastern part of the map of Runeterra, the lawless port city of Bilgewater, and the lands shrouded by the Black Mist, the Shadow Isles. In case you played League of Legends, the main champions you'll be using in Ruined King are Ari, Yasuo, Brom, Pike, Misfortune, and Ilawi. If you're new to the world of Runeterra, that's fine. Each of these characters' backstories will be told as you make progress in the game. The main region will be focusing maybe Bilgewater and the Shadow Isles, but we get some reference on the lore of other regions because of the main cast's diversity. Brom tells stories about the Freljord, or Yasuo about Ionia. There are NPCs from other regions like Demacia that can be encountered, which tell bits of lore from that region as well. Ruined King's overworld view is isometric, similar to games like Diablo or Path of Exile. Walking around the adventure map got me thinking that the graphics fit so well for an ARPG game, but it works just as well in a turn-based RPG's exploration. The adventure map may be isometric, but the turn-based battles are side view, which is not a bad thing. Many great JRPGs have done and continue to do this, because what works, works. The adventure maps all look detailed and don't feel like empty spaces because of all the clutter. I almost always look around the surroundings just to appreciate the design, especially because I'm personally interested in the world and lore of League of Legends. Some loot have been incorporated with the clutter, such as items that can be looted from barrels. Thankfully, you won't have to interact with every barrel you see just to check if there's an item inside, because there is a search function where you can just press a button and will scan the area around you for any lootable or interactable objects. The game's interface is simple, not all over the place, and easy to navigate. League of Legends has over 150 champions and Ruined King focuses on a handful. Besides the main protagonists, you'll also see appearances of other champions like Gangplank, the dreaded ex-pirate king of Bilgewater, and Thresh, the Chain Warden. The main characters have unique abilities and skills you can choose to tweak. For example, Ilawi can be a purely strong healer or a combination of a healer tank. Each champion has their own passive abilities that make their playstyle unique. For example, Brom's passive gives him damage reduction when casting, and Ilawi can passively summon tentacles that enhances her skills and can also passively attack enemies. There's quite a bit of customization for your characters. You have an ability page where you can put points to some ability to enhance them. A rune page with limited points to spend on so you can only focus on specific builds or playstyles for a character. Plus, there's an equipment enhancement and upgrading system as well, where crafting materials are needed. These crafting mats can be farmed from enemy encounter since enemies respawn when you activate a rest area. One other extra feature for customizing is the fishing system. It's a small mini-game where you pull fish at a random direction for you to catch it, which will then reward you with black marks, which can be traded to a merchant that sells rune page points and other useful and cosmetic gear. Technically, I think it's possible to maximize a rune page, which could make your character really strong, but it will really take a lot of time fishing to get all those black marks needed. Personally, I think this is overkill, but if hardcore gamers wish to be super strong, then there's that option. Combat takes place in a side view traditional turn-based RPG, but has its own mechanics. Each hero ability has an initiative rating and you'll see where you will land on the initiative bar after choosing a skill. Your initiative is determined from your initiative stat and these can change based on equipment stats and skill buffs or debuffs. There are skills that can also move or push characters in the initiative bar because there are events in the bar that can either buff or debuff your character. There are three lanes you can choose when casting or using abilities. The default or balance lane, speed lane, and power lane. Each of these lanes have their own strategy involved. Using the power lane will make your attacks hit harder, 
or your heels restore more HP, but the downside of this is a longer cast time. The speed lane, on the other hand, can make you act faster in the initiative bar, but will diminish the power of your abilities. Some character skill upgrades, though, can enhance an ability depending on which lane you choose it from. One example is Ilawi's Healing Mist. It has an upgrade wherein when used in the speed lane, it not only heals the party but also cleanses a debuff. Some enemy buffs can be cancelled by using a skill in a specific lane, or you can simply use a lane to position yourself outside of a hazard or inside a buff. There are skills that need to be activated sooner than an enemy to prevent a bigger disaster, so these lanes will be useful and must be considered carefully to optimize combat. There are also enemies where speed lane or balanced lane will be weak, like an enemy I encountered that had an ability that reduces the damage from speed and balance lanes by 90%. So in situations like these, a power lane may be a viable choice. The lane system can be played around. There are skills that move enemies away from its position in the initiative so they won't hit a bonus event. Sometimes there are specific lane hazards like from the boss giant temple spider, whereas when you use a skill in the balance lane, you'll get slowed. The lanes previously mentioned places you in a different initiative position so you can either avoid a hazard or land on a buff. When you're not doing battle, you're moving around the exploration map. Your characters, as well as enemies, have abilities that can be used to initiate combat that will have bonus effects in battle when it lands successfully. There are rest areas to replenish your party's health and mana and at the same time respawn all enemies, meaning you have the opportunity to farm for loot and experience. These loot can be used in the enchantment system where items you collect from looting and opening chests around the game world can be used to upgrade gear. You will pick up different types of gear and might run out of materials if you upgrade every piece you equip. So if farming for mats is your thing, you can do that in this game. But in my opinion, repeating turn-based battles for loot can be quite tedious. The developers thought about this and added the option to speed up battles by adding a times 2 speed option. Your hero equipment starts weak, and eventually you can loot better gear or upgrade them. The champions don't start with their signature weapons, instead, you loot different equipments that have rarities. Besides the main quest, there are side quests and a bounty board for further increasing your party's strength. The game has its fair share of puzzles, though nothing too complex that made my head hurt. There are puzzles which may seem difficult, but later realize that there are clues around the map about the answer to some of the puzzles. This game has some very good voice acting. Their words are clear, emotional, and they sound exactly like how they sound in League of Legends. This game shows that with great voice acting, you won't necessarily need gorgeous cinematics. Even static characters with just some dialogue and voice acting can tell a very compelling story. When killing enemies, the deep bass effect coupled with slow motion death animation sounds makes defeating enemies much more satisfying and immersive. Each hit delivered feels like they actually hit hard. My overall experience of Ruin King is a good one. The core of a good RPG is the story and narration, and Riot has some talented writers working for them. The Ruined King has expanded my lore of the League of Legends universe. It has given me some idea about the Shadow Isles Mist, Ares' people, the Vesani, the Buru, terms like Pelangi, each character's personalities, traits, and history. Each of the main cast has their own personal quests that merge to the main quest. Each of them get to complete their personal quest along the way while heading towards a common goal, the Ruined King. The merging of character backstories to the main quest line was done smoothly. It has the basic elements of a good RPG game, and although linear, the randomization of loot drops and the upgrade and enhancement system makes the customization somewhat rewarding. The lane system is a worthy addition to a turn-based battle. It adds strategy and skill customization to the mix. I can't say Ruined King is one of the best RPGs made, but it's well done and is definitely one of the good ones. With all that said, I give Ruined King a 7 out of 10.